Yo, what it do, guys, and welcome back to another video. Phasmophobia's newest Christmas update has just released some amazing new changes, and one of the highlights for me is the cursed possession items added within your missions. Whenever you select a mission and enter, you'll be given one of six randomized cursed possessions. So let's go and have a little look at each one and how they function. Now, it's to be noted that you cannot really cheese with these items, as in, they don't function outside of the house, so please go and keep that in mind. First up, the music box. Okay, so how do I use this? Do I just right click? This is quite hard to find due to its size. I was expecting something a little bit bigger, but it's definitely a super strong possession to own. When you play the music, the ghost will sing from its location. This is a great and fast way to find exactly the position of the ghost. However, you cannot cancel the music box currently, and when the music stops playing, the ghost will go into a hunt mode. Now, this even includes if you throw the box on the ground preemptively, or if you get too close to the ghost, it will just go ahead and hunt as well. So do be very careful when wanting to use this one. The Tortured Voodoo Doll. We always used to have voodoo dolls in Phasmophobia, and they didn't really do anything, but at times we thought that they did. However, they've now received an update, and they genuinely offer a service. That service, you ask? To piss off the ghost. <clears throat> Where are you? Whilst holding the doll, you can interact with it by putting pins into random parts of its body. This will cause a ghost interaction, a ghost sighting, or even if you put a pin into the heart of the doll, you will get a ghost hunt. Now keep in mind, it is all random. You have no control over this. I feel this is a good way to get a quiet ghost to move in, however. You can try to capitalize on the interactions it does by using EMF readers, whether it throws an item or turns it on and off a light, or even using UV lights for fingerprints, etc., etc the haunted mirror now don't worry this isn't located in the bathroom at least definitely not the usual mirror spots in the game no this is usually found on the floor and when it's held by a player it will generate a blue mist over the mirror 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 on the wall <laughs> i'm shitting myself can you tell Wait, does that just basically tell me where it is? Whoa. Whenever a player interacts with this possession, they will be able to see the location area of where the ghost currently resides. Now, a tip for this is whether you do or don't know your areas. This will help you in the long run, as the longer you stare into the mirror, the worse you're making it for yourself to be hunted. By knowing the map inside and out, you should only need just a few seconds to pinpoint its exact location. After around 10-ish seconds cumulatively, the mirror will crack and this will force the ghost to hunt you. You can cancel whenever you look into the mirror by simply interacting with it again, but I genuinely do like this item. The Summoning Circle. Now this is easy to spot. Nice and wide, creepy pentagram located on the floor, surrounded by five red candles. From what I've tested so far, this is mostly a way to go and get a picture of the ghost, and that's mostly about it. Summon it by lighting all five candles, and the ghost will appear just once, trapped around for about five seconds. Get your picture and run, and just run like you never ran before, because this is too creepy. I think I just light all of these. I'm sorry!
I'm unsure if you could use this as a strat if you're currently being hunted by a ghost. You know, they're like just about to go and grab you, do like five candles, and then maybe it traps them. I'm not too sure. You guys can go and use this as a trick and get back to me with the results. I'm not risking my life to go ahead and tell, tell you guys this, but you guys can go ahead and be my guinea pigs, all right? Regardless, you can only summon the ghost once. So light on the five candles one time, and you can't really do it ever again. So just keep that in mind, okay? The tarot cards. Now, these are without a doubt my favorites to go and interact with. Search the house for a stacked deck of 10 cards. And when interacting with them, you will have a 1 in 11 different response. Yeah, yeah I think we need some light. Here we go. What does a tarot... <laughs> this goddamn car alarm. You ready? Oh, let's try another tarot card. So we've had the hand mang. Uh, what's this one? Death. Shit. Keep in mind that you may even get the same response three times in a row, for example. Now, these are the cards. Death. This card triggers the ghost to hunt you. Devil. This card triggers a ghost event. Tower. This card is supposed to trigger an interaction. Moon. This card reduces your sanity to completely to zero. Sun. This card restores your sanity to 100%. Wheel of Fortune Green. This card increases your sanity by 25%. Wheel of Fortune Red. This card decreases your sanity by 25%. Hangman. This card kills you instantly. Priestess. This card revives a teammate. Now, those cards I'm comfortable saying work as intended, as we've done a little testing. Unfortunately, I'm a little confused on these last two, and I think I'll be needing your help and a bit more testing on them to know what they fully do. However, here's, here's my thoughts on them, and I might not be too far off at the moment. Permit. Now, some people have basically been saying that this card seems to prevent the ghost from roaming, but it's not really clear to tell, to be honest, as we can't always keep up with the roaming uh, of ghosts. The Fool. This card, to me, I believe cancels whatever card you currently just got, as I haven't really pulled the Fool from a tarot pack at the moment. It seems to activate after a card I have pulled. So if I pulled Hangman and then Hangman changed the fall, I don't die instantly. So it's kind of like a suffix to a prefix, if that makes sense to you. And finally, the Ouija boards. With a whole new visual, the Ouija board works pretty much as similar as it did before. However, it does happen to have a few new questions asking the ghost how did you die and getting responses like choking or drowned just adds more to the character and immersion within your missions so it adds a lot more silliness towards it how did you die choke choked How old are you? 18. However, one of the best interactions they have added to date is stating to the board, hide and seek. This will make the Ouija board count down from five seconds and you will need to get hiding. I love this interaction and I hope for more gimmicks like this in the future. Also, keep in mind that the board will now require you to say goodbye when you are no longer using it. Otherwise, when the ghost is hunting, they will directly destroy your boards and it cannot be used for the rest of the missions to try to keep it safe. This update has brought a refreshing feel back to the game and quite a classy way to troll random lobbies, if you ask me. But all in all, how are you guys finding the new cursed possessions? And what kind of other possessions would you like to see added into the game? Please let me know inside the comment section and share with me some ideas. As per usual, thanks for checking out the video today. If you enjoyed it, can I remind you for a cheeky like? Yeah, no, that's okay. And perhaps to share the video with a friend if they needed help to understand what this is or what this does. Now, I'll be looking forward to future updates for Phasmophobia, and I'll try to cover as much as I possibly can on the channel. So if you haven't yet subscribed, please go and do so. Hit that sub button, and I'll be seeing you guys again in the next video.